nutrition program at Columbia University. Um, the graduate program I was in was the only graduate program that um, in nutrition that did not take money from the food industry. Uh, just like the medical programs in this country, the medical programs are all funded by the drug companies and the nutrition programs are all funded by uh, the food companies. And really the drug and the food companies are the same people. So we have the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, really the same people. When I was in graduate school, I remember having two professors, um, two older white women who had come to Cuba um, to study the food system because um, my program at Columbia was very much uh, a promoter of and conscious of consuming local foods over simply organic, okay? Um, the term organic is defined differently depending on what state you're in and what government agency um, certified it organic. But I remember back in 2003, 2004, and I was learning about this stuff, they also brought it to my attention that, you know, New York State, which is the big apple, we grow tons of great apples in New York, um, but when you went to the supermarket and you went to find organic apples, they were all from Washington State. So the organic apples were from Washington State and not New York State, which is, again, why my professors put local over organic, because organic stuff is not always local. Local food is extremely important because it's higher in um, it's more nutrient dense, so it's higher in nutritional value because it's closer to the source. When you're getting an apple from Washington State, you have to pick it when it's not ripe. Ship it across the country, which might take like two weeks. Then they keep it in the back in the supermarket for a few months sometimes before they put it out. And when they want to put it out, they'll treat it with ethylene gas. Ethylene gas is the gas that fruits and vegetables naturally produce and give off as they ripen. So the supermarkets would use ethylene gas to ripen the fruit and put it out for us. So a lot of the produce you buy from the supermarket, even when it says organic, is months and months old, which means it not only has depleted in nutritional value, but when it was picked, it wasn't picked in, at its ripe state. So you're getting this uh, severely, you know, decreased um, nutrition in those type of um, foods. Um, also, it's not good for the environment, you know. The vegetarian community likes to talk about, about how, like, you know, cows produce methane gas and, you know, why eating meat is bad for the environment. Um, however, consuming a vegan diet and consuming stuff that's not local to your environment, like, you know, being in the United States and consuming acai and, you know, um, all these food that don't, they're not local to our environment, it's depleting those sources in those countries, you know. Um, then it puts a lot of pollution in the air to be shipping all this produce from the West Coast to the East Coast. So all this produce from South America and the Caribbean to North America. That puts a lot of uh, pollution into the air from that travel, from the buses, from the planes, all that gasoline. Most of the produce in the East Coast is from the West Coast. Okay. And as I move around throughout the United States, a lot of times when I'm in like these little nowhere suburban towns, um, sorry, a lot of bus going by. little suburban towns, they have like massive supermarkets, and every single day of the week, they have bananas. I mean, every single day of the year, whether, no matter what season it is, they have bananas, they have oranges, they have lemons, everything, strawberries, everything that we want, it's there all year, even when it's not in season. But when you're working with local foods, you have to also work with seasonal foods, the foods that are in season. And I remember when my professors came to Cuba, what they said was, since it's the, it's the only country in this hemisphere that, um, does not use pesticides, herbicides, monocropping, and GMO, and that is because of them being disconnected from the United States. When the United States gives money to poor nations, they force them to use herbicides and pesticides. They force them to monocrop. So many times, like I've heard, you know, my Caribbean friends talk about Caribbean food as if it was so much better. But when I was in Jamaica, uh, I saw the same crap I saw in the United States. A lot of times, a lot worse. Yes, you can find some bush people in Jamaica who don't eat that stuff, but the same is true in the United States. Not everybody in the U.S. eats processed food. There are people in the U.S. who still live off their land, who still eat rabbit and deer and squirrel and go hunt, eat from the local environment. So that also exists in the U.S. But when I was in Jamaica, when I was in Costa Rica, Costa Rica in the jungle with monkeys swinging from the trees and 
people there are cooking with, you know, they, they go to the store to buy bags of MSG to cook with. There's a lot of GMO in Costa Rica. Um, I've been told by Costa Ricans several times that there is no pineapple there that's not GMO. And you see it. I've been all around Costa Rica. And when I'm on the bus traveling from one town to the next, you see miles and miles and miles of, like, pineapple or something. Or miles and miles and miles of bananas. That's monocropping. My professors spoke about Cuba and they said that, you know, people grow stuff anywhere. In between houses, in front of their house, wherever. And the first day I was here, where I'm staying, happens to be across the street from a farmer's market. And the farmer's market had a lot of roots. So a lot of taro, yuca, um, garlic, carrots. Then I saw uh, melon, tomatoes. Uh, papaya, which they call la bomba, um, and calabasa, I uh, forget what that is, I think it's calabasa, is um, not squash, but I forgot, it's something that we know, I'll get back to you, but there's a lot of that, like there was no avocado, you know, sometimes I saw a little bit of bananas, but not really, um, there were no avocados, no strawberries, no mangoes, and all these things, because maybe they must be out of season, or they're not ripe yet, you know? You have to get stuff when it's available. And in, in the produce book, totally different than anything I've seen anywhere in the day. It was covered in like a red dirt. And I'm trying to get some photos of it next week. Like when I saw it last Sunday, I didn't want to like, you know, take pictures and stand out like, oh, she's not from here. And I was kind of nervous, but now I'm feeling more comfortable with just taking pictures of it. But it's covered in like a red dirt. Like the dirt here is like this reddish color. Very fertile, it's a very fertile land. Kind of reminds me of New Orleans in the sense that when you're walking down the street, there's all these plants and stuff that just grow wild. Uh, New Orleans is a lot like that. Um, and what I know of is Cuban food in the United States. Whatever I've had in Miami or New York or wherever I've been in the, in the United States, um, the food here is way more diverse than what we get as Cuban food. A lot better, actually. And a lot different in some ways. Um, Cubans love pork. Now, pork is, like, seems like the number one most consumed meat around the world because like, Haitians eat a lot of pork, uh, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans eat a lot of pork, Mexicans, a lot of South Americans, uh, black people in the South, uh, Polynesians, Asians, Europeans, uh, and Africans that aren't from Muslim countries all eat a lot of pork. And the thing about any fruit and or animal, its nutritional value has to do with the land that it comes from. So since Cuba is a place that does not use other herbicides and pesticides, there is no promotion food industry here, there's no mass production here, um, you can believe that the pork here is going to be good. Because, especially like Caribbean, Caribbean pigs who might be eating coconut and stuff like that, their fat is going to be high in MCT and CLA fats, which help you burn fat, which are strong for your, good for your immune system. And just in general, pork and lard is actually a health food. Um, it's a tra traditional food. And, um, what was I going to say? So these, these pigs are not like the commercial food industry pigs that we may have in the U.S. Although in the U.S. you can go to a farmer's market and get pork that is not raised that way. Um, but I find that when I was in Costa Rica, I spent a lot of time there. When I was in Jamaica, possibly Puerto Rico, I don't remember 100% food in Puerto Rico, but Puerto Rico is so connected to the United States that you better believe that they have very using crap. But when I was in those countries, I felt like it was a lot harder for me to find good quality food than it is when I'm in New York. Um, and it's a shame. But in Cuba, you see hope, you know, because people are very healthy here, very, very healthy looking. Um, from what I've heard, their uh, infant survival rate is very high. And uh, despite what people may think, nutrition plays a huge role in that. And um, so yeah, local foods are better for the environment because they're more nutrient dense. It's more in balance. We want to be in balance with the earth. Um, we don't want to cause excess pollution that we don't need to cause. And that's what happens when we're buying stuff that's not local and out of season. It's putting stress on the environment. So if you're a vegan who's eating avocado and kale and all this stuff in the winter, or it's not even from your environment, you know, like you live in Chicago and you're eating avocado every day and mangoes and stuff, that's not from your environment. 
you should be looking at local seasonal foods. And when you do that, vegans can't survive in a lot of environments. Can't survive in a desert, can't survive a lot of places. Um, so that's important as we, as we move forward to keep in mind moving in balance with nature, local seasonal foods, support local farmers, and not big commercial food industry. So not only is it more messed up to the people, the workers, but it's bad for the environment. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Please follow my YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81. Thanks, people. Bye.